Welcome back to Harbaugh and the Politics Fix. Tonight, we're joined by MSNBC political analyst Howard Feynman of Newsweek magazine and Bob Herbert of the New York Times. Let's take a look at some of the words here. Here's President Bush with two of his memorable statements. I don't care, dead or alive, either way. I mean, I, I uh, uh, it doesn't matter to me. There are some who uh, feel like that, you know, the conditions are such that they can attack us there. My answer is bring them on. We got the force necessary to deal with the security situation. And here's President Bush. Uh, here's President Bush now on CNN with some of his regrets about making those statements. I regret saying some things I shouldn't have said. Like? Like, dead or alive, or bring them on. You know, is. Uh, uh, and by the way, my wife reminded me that hey, as president of the United States, you better be careful what you say. I mean, I was trying to convey a message. I probably could have conveyed it more artfully. You know, I, being on this ship reminds me of when I went to the USS Abraham Lincoln, and they had a sign that said, Mission Accomplished. I regret that, uh, you know, that sign was there. It was a sign aimed at the sailors on that ship. However, it conveyed a, a broader knowledge. It, to some, it said, well, Bush thinks the war in Iraq is over, when I didn't think that, but nevertheless, it conveyed the wrong message. So there are things I've regretted. Well, Howard, I guess we've been through that, but I, I think it's interesting that it takes his wife to tell. <laughs> Doesn't he have people at work that sort of warn him? I, I do. I can tell you. My producers tell me immediately when I make a mistake, uh, and I make them a lot. But uh, isn't that funny? He brings it home to kind of a situation comedy. Well, my wife said I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, well, uh, my, my dominant impression here is of is as of a president of the united states who's kind of checked out he's already in the locker room with a towel around his neck you know giving his interpretation of the interceptions that he threw you know, it was a tough game he's still president as barack obama said we only have one president at a time yeah. this guy's still the president we've got an economy cratering by the minute and he's sort of uh, having fun rewriting history and joking about what his wife told him uh, it's not a confidence-inducing thing. Uh, I, I don't mean to be harsh here, but we still have a ways to go here, and every minute counts in the economic situation. And this guy, I think, has checked out many, many months ago. Uh, he's counting the minutes till he gets out that door, uh, but he's still got a job to do. Bob, that's a question. Howard suggested our, if something's falling between the cracks here, it's us. It's the United States of America. Because if the auto industry goes down, and we have three million jobs in jeopardy that could create a macroeconomic disaster and of course if this financial thing isn't straightened out and it doesn't seem to be where Paulson is moving the money around and not really telling us what mandate he's operating under whether he goes to uh, you know clean up the mortgage problems or he does something else with the banks at a greater level at a higher level I mean who is in charge you know I think um, maybe I will be a little harsh here uh, the president seems to be concerned about style points or public relations, how he looked uh, when he made uh, what, he saw, what he saw as inartful comments. But, you know, it might have been better if he had some regrets, like perhaps some regrets that related to the war, or maybe he was sorry uh, about the way he handled the nation's finances, or if he, if, I'd be happier if he were a little sorrier about um, extraordinary rendition and prisoners who were tortured and what that did to the United States reputation around the world. I mean, the United States is in a deep, deep fix here, and uh, President Bush uh, bears a great deal of responsibility. So there's more to be um, uh, regretful about than a few inartful comments. Well, that's why you're one of the great columnists today. Howard, I agree. I mean, I was falling into the trap of trivialization along with our president. Right. He led me into that valley of, of absurdity, as if it really matters whether he committed this faux pas or that when right. we're talking about the United States of America, which is in terrible shape. And I could argue morally, because of a lot of the issues that Bob just raised, morally about torture, rendition, war, unjustified war, death by the tens of thousands of our own people, uh, certainly the people, if you add them up, the, the casualty rate in Iraq is in the tens of thousands. And uh, he, he was either morally right or morally culpable, and that would be an area of confession that might be more relevant. Well, I agree, and, and I, I agree. I was led down that path just as you were, and Bob brought us back to 
reality, but I, I also think we don't expect any real confession or self-knowledge from George Bush, at least publicly <laughs> expressed. At least publicly expressed. Uh, most other normal human beings would be wringing their hands at this point, but it's both a virtue and a huge drawback of George Bush that he refuses either to look back or to look inward, it seems. Uh, and so I guess I wasn't ever expecting, certainly at this point, before he leaves office, any kind of true uh, soul-searching on the part of this man. Soul-searching does not seem, or political soul-searching, well, does not seem to be in his makeup. So that's why I wasn't even looking for it. Well, we're obviously at the cross-section of horror and hilarity right now. The horror being so horrible, it's hilarious. And that's, that's a I'm problem sorry. with my soul. I can't deal with this level of horror. It begins to be just gallows humor. Anyway, we'll be back with Howard Feynman and Bob Herbert with more of the politics fix. You're watching it on Hardball.